Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video I thought I'd just do this uh, real-time draw with me as I'm drawing. Uh, this is a Briard, so a French Sheepdog, my most recent commission. Um, and in this real-time draw with me I thought I'd just kind of have a bit of a catch-up with you all. Um, I asked for some questions on Instagram and I've had some questions through. Um, and I thought I'd also have a chat about my uh, Patreon channel because it's something I've not mentioned here on uh, YouTube. Um, but I just want to start off with um, kind of an update with uh, YouTube. So I know I've not been around for a, a while. Um, I took a bit of time off from YouTube. Uh, I've just been kept so, so busy. Life has been hectic. Um, so YouTube kind of just had to take a back seat. But I'm hoping, as I say, to come back and uh, there'll be more videos. I've uploaded a recent one on how I draw a dog's eye. Um, there's going to be one on how I draw a dog's nose, a dog's muzzle. There's going to be a whole series and, yeah, back to some tutorials. Um, and I'm, yeah, really excited, actually, to bring them back to, to YouTube um, and to help people who... Maybe just can't afford, you know, to join a Patreon or can't afford to uh, download uh, tutorials that people offer. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, very excited to be back. Sorry, just let me concentrate here. So, yeah, as I say, with, the, uh, with YouTube, I'm hoping to do at least one video a week. Uh, whether it's like a real-time draw with me as I'm working on a piece or um, whether I do a tutorial piece um, or just like a little how-to video. There's going to be also... I've got a lot planned. Um, I have a lot planned for YouTube, um, which, yeah, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but there's going to be quite a few different videos, which I hope will be of help to uh, everybody. Sorry, I know I'm going to keep going quiet. This, so obviously this is a Briard. They are sheep dogs, uh, but they have very long fur. So I'm kind of approaching this how I would like a spaniel ear, um, and just building it up into sections. But it does take a bit of concentration. I also am trying to just blend it out. I don't want any harsh lines when I'm drawing this kind of fur. Um, I want it all to be really like soft and blended looking, as you can see. I don't want it to be um, harsh and I don't want it to look cartoony, which I feel when I first started doing spaniel ears or curly fur, I definitely had that kind of look to it. Um, actually, let me grab a scrap piece of paper and I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so I've got a bit of scrap paper. So you can see how we've got all the fur, uh, curly fur here. So what I've done is I obviously I bl I'm blending it out, which I will explain more in the actual video. But one thing that I want to do is I want to avoid kind of doing lines like this, which this is how I used to do it. And then I would say that, say we had a shadow here. I would then come in and get a, a shadow blocked in. And then I wouldn't really blend it out. This would be a highlight, then this would be another shadow. And it creates this really car cartoony effect. Now, I'm not saying this is the wrong way to do it. This is just how I don't want my work to look. Um, so whereas now, I will come in and I will blend lots and lots of layers. So if I just slightly blend this out either side, you can see how it just softens that line. It's not as harsh looking as here, where if I was to just come in and do this it's a lot a lot harsher looking so you can see how everything is really smoothly blended out now again there's no right or wrong way it's all personal preference as to you know how you want your work to look um i just want this to all look yeah super smooth and blended um as possible um, so yeah, have I got anything else to say about YouTube? So as I said, once a week I'm hoping to upload a video to YouTube. Um, I'm going to stick to once a week. Um, and then once I do the tutorials, obviously I'll upload them as we go. Um, so I've done, as I said, I've done the dog eye. Uh, we've done one dog eye. Uh, next is going to be the dog nose. Um, and I'm just going to... My, my goal is to break down these 
little sections of dogs. So from the eyes to the nose to the mouth, uh, different types of fur. So I may I may do one similar to this uh, kind of fur. Uh, um, different colours, sort of how I pick colours. I really want to go into a lot of detail with these YouTube videos. Um, they will be available, some of them will be available on Patreon first um, so that my Patreons get to watch the video before they go live here on YouTube. Um, so in regards to my Patreon, I have been on Patreon now for a year um, or over a year now. So there's over a year's worth of content on there. Um, and we draw so many different animals from uh, cats, wild, there's lots of wildlife actually, uh, dogs, there's not, not too many dogs actually. Um, actually, let me see how many of each animal we have. Okay, so I've just looked, there is uh, four dog tutorials um, and then there's a mixture of wildlife, so there's things like an arctic hare, a fox, a caracal, um, we've got farm, some farm animals like a donkey, a cow, uh, there's birds, there's a horse, there's cats. Like There's so many different animals that we do. It isn't just focused on dogs over on Patreon. Um, I like to yeah keep that kind of mixture going on. Um, and over on Patreon there's uh, two different tiers for the tutorials. So there is the uh, practice tier. Uh, where we focus on something so like the focus tutorials so similar to the dog eye it'll be focusing on like a dog's eye um we've done like a leather bridle um a muzzle of a zebra um i've done reflective surfaces a dog's collar like well, there's so many just different focus parts um that i i focus on in that tier and then the full the 10 pound tier so sorry let me start again the the focus tier is £5 a month and that just gives you access to those focus tutorials. Now, when you get up to the uh, the full tutorials, so the ones where you can draw like the attic hair, the cat, the dogs, the horse, whatever you want to draw along with me, that's £10 a month. And those tutorials are all in real time. So full real time tutorials. Um, and I basically talk you through step by step how I'm creating a piece. Now, on my Patreon, I, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So I only use the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils um, in my tutorials. I don't use any other pencil brand. Um, there has been an occasion where I might, I've brought in the odd luminance. Um, and I think that's only happened in one or two tutorials. And that's usually the, the white or the buff titanium. Um, otherwise, I do just use the Polychromos because I know the pencils get expensive. Like they're not, I know they're not cheap. Um, and I do have on my website, um, I do have all the pencils listed um, in the material list on my website, so you can make sure you've got colours or similar colours um, to the ones that I am using. And I'm always available, you know, to help out if you don't have the exact same. Um, and then when it comes to paper on my Patreon, I mainly use the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolour Paper. Um, and occasionally I will use the drafting film. So I try and, as I say, try and keep it as simple as possible. Um, obviously, I have students that have used different papers. You don't have to use the exact same. Because uh, I want my tutorials to be there as a guide rather than, you know, you copy along exactly. Um, but yeah, the, the real-time tutorials, it's all, as I say, it's all real-time. So I think the the longest tutorial at the moment is about 15 hours uh, worth of footage. Um, and I try and keep each part to an hour. So I upload them around 45 minutes to an hour long uh, for each section so that they're, they're nice and short. Um, and I do that because I, I feel like after an hour, you get that sense of accomplishment when I, I kind of say, okay, that's the end of this part. You've completed a section and it's, yeah, I, I feel it's just nice to have that sense of achievement that you've, you know, you've finished a part and there's not, you're not already staring at like another four or five hours to go um, if you've paused, like paused the video. And then I 
if you followed any of the tutorials on YouTube, I just basically talk you through step by step what I'm doing and the colours I'm using and why. Um, so I'll have the link to my Patreon down below. Um, if you want to join, you can. Um, I'd love to have you over there. Uh, next month we join Alima. He's actually finished, and I'm very excited to um, have him as a tutorial next because um, he was a lot of fun to draw. He's got a very cute expression, a very very cute expression, uh, and that'll be the full tutorial, um, which is available. I'm also going to be releasing some of these uh, newer tutorials, so probably starting from this month's tutorial onwards as uh, downloadables on my website so that you don't have to join patreon um you can just download it as a one-off download um that you get to keep uh indefinitely but i just need to um sort my website out to uh, so so that people can purchase them uh that way uh, but yeah i hope that's kind of helped, you know, what I'm doing kind of here on YouTube and what I'm doing over on Patreon. I, I'd love to have you join Patreon. I, I'm enjoying it so much uh, and doing all these different tutorials. Um, yeah, I really, really do enjoy it. Um, and I think at some point we're going to do a dog similar to this. Maybe not as crazy curly furred because with this piece I am using the polychromos and the uh Karen Dash pencil so the luminance the pablos um have i used i've not used any derwent i do have derwent light fast i don't reach for them as much as i do the Karen Dash and the polychromos um so i've not actually reached for that for this piece but i do that's why one of the reasons as well is i as I said, I know how expensive pencils can be to build up a collection. So I do like to stick to just the polychromos. But also just to show, like, you don't need all the pencil brands. You can do so much with just one set. Um, and just blending and mixing your colours together. There's just obviously helpful colours within the other pencil brands. So, like, this is a luminance pencil. This is silver grey. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous blue colour. So this actually helps build up a nice base layer. Um, along with that polychromos. <laughs> so this piece that I am working on, sorry, I'm just looking for a pencil, is a commission. Um, and <clears throat> it's a, a lovely piece, actually, to be working on. Tricky, um, but it's from my own reference photo, so... I, I know this dog very, very well. Um, this is actually one of my own dogs. Um, that's at my parents' house. Um, and I've been commissioned by my dad to to draw her. Um, and we looked through all the photos that I've taken throughout the years um, of her. So this is Esme. Um, and we looked through all the photos. It took us a while to decide on a photo. Um, and this is the one we went for. So it's actually a full body shot. She's uh, trotting towards the camera with a her head kind of turned to the side, which actually I, I really like. It just, again, adds to that sense of movement um, and really brings some life into the piece. So she is a, a Briad. They are French sheepdogs. Um, and obviously there's no eyes that I've had to draw in this piece because they're hidden behind the fur, which makes this piece tricky for me. Um, if you know or follow me in my work, you know that I like to draw the eyes first and kind of work from the eyes outwards and around. Um, but yeah, with no eyes, I actually started with the nose on this piece, which was really, really weird. Um, so I actually got the nose in and kind of worked my way backwards um, up this piece. And then now, obviously, I'm kind of coming down here and then I'll work on the tongue soon um, and start working our way down the page. Um, and it's... Oh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned, this is drawn on the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolour Paper. Uh, I use the heaviest weight, so 630 GSM, 
which I think is, is it £300? Um, and she is uh, A3 in size, so 12 by 16 inches. So it's a really a really good size. I like doing headshots at this size. Obviously, this is full body. So it makes it, it, makes it tricky, but because she's mainly fur, um, it's a little easier because I'm just drawing in the clumps of fur rather than trying to focus on all the tiny, tiny details in the face. And then, as I, as you can see, as we're working along on this piece, I'm building up all the, all the colours first, and then I'm coming through and adding all the the flyaway hairs after. Um, but mainly focusing on my values, so making sure that my darks are really dark, my lights are light, um, and then the details are kind of a secondary factor. Um, as you can probably tell as we're building this up. So she's a uh, first, she, no, she's not the first black Briad. I have drawn uh, Briads before. I drew a trio. I want to say trio. I'm sure it was a trio of Briads. Um, but she's the first full body one that I've drawn. Um, and the first one in, oh gosh, two years now. So it's been a while since I've drawn this breed, even though it's a breed that, you know, I lived with for so, so many years. Um, but yeah, I can describe living with them in a bit because um, what I'm going to do now is go through some of the questions that I got asked on my Instagram um, so that I can keep rambling as I'm drawing, um, hopefully drawing along with you um, or if you're just watching. Um, I asked for some questions, uh, what people wanted to know. Um, and I think a good way to do it is obviously kind of give you my story. So I was uh, born into a family of dogs. Um, we, well, dogs and horses. We started with horses and had family dogs. So we, uh, my nan and granddad had a Jack Russell and a Border Collie. And we had the horses um, before we then went on and got a Border Collie ourselves. Um, and then... As, I, as obviously I was getting older, my younger brother was getting older, um, kind of did it, it was, you know, decide do we want to keep going with dogs or do we want to keep pursuing the horses? Um, and dogs was the winner. <laughs> and we got another Border Collie. So my first Border Collie or the first family Border Collie was Chief. He was a blue and white Border Collie. And I would love to one day maybe find some old family photos and draw the dogs that we used to have um, but yeah Chief was the first one uh, blue and white border collie and then we had Denim who was also a blue and white border collie and then obviously as I grew up um, I was I, I was involved and still am actively involved with dog shows um, so I got my first uh, junior handling dog um, and she was called Storm she was a black and white border collie um, oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, she, oh, she was, she was an amazing, amazing dog. She lived until she was, uh, well, she was a week away from her 16th, bless her, um, before I unfortunately lost her. So she was a, a great, great companion. Um, from the border collies, we got Briads. Um, so the Briads come in different colours. Uh, they come in a fawn, so like a brown colour, um, and the black. Um, so we started off with Maurice. She was our foundation girly because we bred litters. Um, so we bred a litter from Maurice and we kept Dakota, her daughter, who um, I will be drawing at some point. Um, I'll probably draw all our briads at some point, but I will be drawing Dakota. Um, and then Dakota had a litter um, and we kept her son Sirius. Um, and Maurice had a second litter and we kept Arizona. So we, we only bred if we were having a puppy ourselves for the show ring and to keep as pets. Uh, they're always pets first. Um, so we ended up with the Briads. Um, and then Esme came along. So Esme uh, is who I'm drawing now. Uh, she came from a really good friend of ours. Um, and she is now... Oh gosh, let me think. She's eight now. Um... In this photo, I think, I'm trying to remember if she was five or six. She was, I think she was five. 
I want to say she was five in this photo, so quite a younger photo of her. Um, I mean, she doesn't look much different now. <laughs> she still looks like this, uh, still full of life. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my introduction to dogs. So obviously it's kind of apparent that dogs were going to be a huge, huge part of my life. Um, obviously I, I did art within school. So I did my GCSE art. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the best experience. Um, we, we didn't really have, and I found talking to a few people, they had the same experience. Didn't really have the liberty of wanting to draw, you know, exploring our own creativeness, I guess. Um, our school, I had to draw flowers. Uh, I didn't want to draw flowers. I wanted to draw dogs, <laughs> but we had to draw flowers. Um, so after GCSE art, so GCSE is um, 14 to 16, 15 to 16, um, I kind of stopped doing art. I also had had a major knock in my confidence with artwork. Um, I'd had a comment had been made to me um, about my work with colour um, and it really, really knocked me uh, sideways. So I didn't draw um for many many well i say i didn't draw i drew in graphite but it was what i call doodles um i drew for myself not for anybody else i didn't share anywhere it was just scrap scratches uh, scribbles on um scrap pieces of paper so it was um only when i went to university so i had obviously taken a step back from artwork completely um and when i went to university i actually went to university for law um and i did my undergraduate's degree and my master's degree in law um and obviously i'm sure a lot of you are well aware that any university degree is very stressful you know there's so much work that you have to put into it uh, but a law degree is there's a lot of reading a lot of work um very high intense uh, degree um, which I absolutely loved don't get me wrong I absolutely loved doing it but because I I struggle with my anxiety and uh, stress levels and uh, chronic health I actually turned to drawing again to help me relax and yeah just so now I find when I'm drawing I can just really get in the zone and forget about what is going on um, and yeah, just, I found it my, my way of escaping everything, uh, when I needed just an hour's break. So again, I was just using graphite. I was only doing black and white drawings in graphite. Um, and I just kept drawing and drawing and I actually then started to share them with people online. Um, <coughs> uh, my friends on Facebook, um, I didn't share them anywhere else. It was just with friends and family. Um, and then I I was doing this through my master's, my master's and my undergraduate. Now, unfortunately, during my undergraduate degree, I lost my granddad. And then during my master's degree, I lost my nan. Um, and I didn't, I, I'm the kind of person I didn't stop. Um, I didn't stop my degrees. I didn't ask for any uh deadlines to be postponed I just kept working and working um I don't think I actually told many of my professors actually what had happened um I just wanted to carry on as normal now unfortunately this wasn't a good move uh, mentally um and we all know what happened in 2020 when we had lockdown and lockdown made me stop and because I stopped everything that I'd been bottling up for years came to the forefront and I was not in a good place mentally. Um, now, I'm very, very lucky that I have a very supportive partner um, who basically allowed me to take some time off. Um, I was going to go back and do my PhD. Um, so I was looking at doing a PhD in law um, and I knew that being on my own during lockdown, doing a high intense PhD was not good for me mentally. Um, and up until this point, I'd still been drawing. We'd um, we'd actually got our own dog together, um, my studio assistant Axel, who is a Siberian husky. And I'd done a few drawings of him and his sisters, 
um, and I started experimenting in colour. Now, lockdown, the, there was a lot of other things happening personally, um, but long story short, lockdown basically gave me the opportunity to um, go back to colour. I essentially decided I would have another play with coloured pencils and I'm so glad I did. Now, my first coloured pencil piece, it was good for what I didn't know. Um, obviously, I've learnt so much with coloured pencils now, um, but for what I, my lack of knowledge, I was really proud of the piece I produced. Um, and I kept practising and sharing the coloured pencil pieces and I, the confidence within myself slowly, I'd say slowly started to be re-sparked um, and I started to really enjoy drawing again uh, for myself. And then I did my, oh, I did an Australian Shepherd called Blake um, and I bought a collie called Shock. They were my second and third coloured pencil pieces. And I don't know what came over me. I entered them into an online competition um, and they both got awards and were accepted. And once I shared this on Facebook, uh, the two coloured pencils, once they were finished, um, that's kind of where my life changed. Um, I was getting friends and family asking for commissions. Um, would I do a coloured portrait commission? Um, and then I created my Facebook page and kept sharing and created my Instagram, my, uh, eventually I created a TikTok. Um, and yeah, three years later, I, I'm still blown away by all the support that I've received of my artwork. I'm still learning, um, but I'm so, so grateful that out of something terrible with the world and, I, I lost a lot of good friends. Uh, I lost a good friend because of COVID. And yeah, obviously a lot changed. Um, and I never went back to do my PhD. Um, I'd still like to. It's on the cards, potentially in the future. But I am now using coloured pencils to create artwork for so many amazing people. I work closely with the Siberian Husky Club of Great Britain. Um, I've had some amazing, amazing commissions. Um, I'm looking at potentially hosting an uh, in-person workshop. I've been invited to host one. Um, yeah, it's been a, a crazy, crazy ride um, from not believing in myself or being... I want to say it was not believing in myself, being very critical of myself and letting comments from other people sway sway me. Whereas now I, I'm very confident in the work that I do. I, I'm so so proud and, yeah, just love sharing my work with people around the world, and that I can create memories that last a lifetime. So that's kind of my story into coloured pencils, as brief as I can. <laughs> I'm sure I've missed out a lot um, along the way, but. That is kind of the overview of how I came into coloured pencils. And then three years later, I'm still here, still drawing. Um, and I've got clients around the world, which is crazy, you know. It's crazy to think that my artwork is in so many different countries. But I, I still find it so humbling and so special that I'm able to create memories for so, so many people. Uh, that are you know going to last a lifetime and that is what this is about for me it's um yeah creating a memory to last a lifetime and now teaching people how to not how to draw um how my techniques may help them because obviously everybody's got different techniques uh, we all work in such different ways and it's just about finding the techniques that work for you i i know my technique isn't going to be for everybody um, the way I teach won't be for everybody and that is, you know, totally fine you have to do what works for you um, but yeah that is kind of my, my story um, so another question that I got asked was uh, how big do I work so a lot of the pieces that I do um, are usually about this size 12 by 16 is a popular size um, I do 10 by 12s for one headshot. 
um, they've become a little bit more popular as well, um, especially for smaller dog breeds or cats. Um, the largest I have ever done is 22 by 30 inches. So that is a full sheet of the Fabriana, um, which, it, yeah, it's a, it's a large piece. Um, it took me, it was a, my team of six sled dogs uh, called Eagerness. It took me uh, just under 90 hours to complete did that piece. So it was a long, it was a large piece, took me many hours. Um, it's not the piece that took me the longest though. So another question I got asked was what, you know, how long do they take? The longest piece I took. So uh, the, lo the long, la oh, wow, words. <laughs> um, the piece that took me the longest was a four dog commission. Um, it was slightly smaller than the 22 by 30. Um, but it was, uh, it took me a total of 107 hours uh, to do the four dogs. Um, so it, you know, was, wasn't a quick piece, but it was so, so worth it. That piece, um, I absolutely loved. It was a, a really nice family portrait um, of a Rhodesian Ridgeback, uh, Kuyu, who was the Rhodesian Ridgeback, Maya, who was uh, her daughter, uh, Tika, who was uh, a German shorthead pointer, and uh, Seiko, who uh, was also the um, pup of um, Kuyu and uh, Seiko. So it was a re really, really nice portrait to complete. Um, and that went all the way to Canada. Uh, but that one took me the longest. In terms of how long these pieces take, I I don't like to give time limits. Um, obviously, if I have a deadline, I will always, always reach the deadline. Um, they take me anywhere between 20 to 60 hours. Is about average. Um, and that's usually two to three weeks. So I don't work on one piece for the whole day. Um, I do... I do like to rotate between pieces personally. Um, this allows me to come back to each piece with a fresh eye. Um, and I know not everybody likes to do that. Um, as I say, everybody works in different ways. So I do like to work on different pieces. So I do about one and a half to three hours. Sorry, I'm just sharpening a pencil. Um, so yeah, I do one and a half to three hours, I'd say on the piece, on the commission. And then obviously we have all the other bits admin to do and uh, other pieces that I like to work on, whether it's a secret commission, a tutorial or um, an original piece. Um, but yeah, I'd say something this size is going to be about two weeks work. So um, I'm, I'm about eight hours into this portrait, which doesn't seem like a lot for how much I've done, but for, you know, how complicated the, the fur is. Um, I'm really slowing down on this piece, so I'm, I'm about on track for this one. She'll be done. I would say this piece she'll definitely be done by the end of next week. Um, and that's providing health doesn't get in the way. So I do suffer with chronic ill health. So unfortunately, I can't draw every day like most people. Um, there is days where I get no drawing done because I am in bed. <laughs> Um, so I suffer with migraines, unfortunately. Um, I've suffered with them since I was 13. Um, so I just kind of have to work almost around them, um, but also just know my, my limits and what triggers them um, also helps. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of helps with uh, regards to time. Um, something like this, obviously, long fur is going to take a lot longer. And also... Um... Sorry, I'm looking for a colour. Um... I also find black fur takes me longer uh, just because I, as you can probably see as I'm working on this piece, I like to use so many colours in the fur. Um, you can kind of see it now that I've zoomed in, the blues, the browns, um, obviously the greys. Um, if I just zoom you out a bit, um, you can kind of see here how it all works together to create the effect. Obviously, she's not... She's not a dark, dark black. She's in a, a really nice natural lit surrounding. Um, so we're getting some of the lights uh, really reflecting the surrounding colours, which is really nice to capture in the portrait. So 
it's one of the reasons I, I really do take my time and why I like to build up so many colours in my fur because it's just how I like my work to look. <laughs> okay, um, so in regards to colour, that leads us on to another question I got is uh, what apps do I use to help get the right colour? So I actually don't use any apps to get the right colours. Um, I just have my reference photo. Let me grab it. So this is my reference photo on an iPad. Um, this is it zoomed out um, and I like to zoom in so that I can see all like the purples, the blues, uh, any of the blacks, uh, just all the colours that I can see within the fur. Um, now I do have swatch sheets which um, I've not got any to hand to show you but I've created swatch sheets so I could hold the swatch sheet up against the reference photo and you'd be able to see like the colours so like here if I had a swatch sheet I can see there's a bit of purple um, or you can just take the pencils and kind of hold it up and just see if this kind of matches um, another way is um, to get whatever colour you're working on get a light, a highlight tone, so a light colour, a mid-tone and a shadow. So you're getting your shadows, your mid-tones and your highlights and then working from there and then just as you build up more experience, the more colours you're going to see. Um, you can also use like a colour picker. So um, if you took the photo, let me actually, let me do this for you. If we take the photo into Procreate, um, that's the app on my iPad. So this is open in Procreate. Now what you can do is on Procreate, if I wasn't sure what colour was here, I can hold down and it'll colour pick and then on a new layer I can bring up, oh, let me get a better um, pen. So um, I can colour pick if I wasn't sure what colour and then I can draw out and just create Obviously you do it a bit neater, but you can create a colour and then you can come through with your coal grey. So I'm looking here at this being like a coal grey 5 and I can hold my pencil up to uh, these colours. So again, if I wasn't sure kind of what colour was here, this is looking, whoops, very like burnt umbery or kaput mortem. So I can come in and actually I see more of a uh, brownish tone from the um, Pablo's. So obviously having the different colours helps, but also say this was a colour that I wasn't sure how to capture with just the polychromos. Because I've got this drawn out on this app, I can then come through with like a scrap piece of paper and I can, uh, the paper that I'm using as well. And then you can just layer up your pencils and on a scrap piece of paper and this will help you create the colours. But when you're creating um, artwork like uh, this, sorry, I've just knocked the camera stand. Um, it's not about creating um, the correct colours as such. Yes, colours are important, but the thing that's the most important is that your values are correct. So you want to be making sure that you're getting your, your darks dark and your lights light. And it's something that I will always, uh, always talk about in uh, my work is that I really want to get these darks dark and my lights light. The colours are just kind of secondary. Um, and seeing the hidden colours, so the purples, the blues, the greens, that's all going to come the more you draw. Um, and again, the more you draw, the more you're going to be like, okay, this colour's this, or this is this colour recipe, this is how I create this colour. It all, it takes time, and I know a lot of people don't, don't particularly like that answer, but it is about taking your time, but there is little, little tricks. Uh, the reason I don't use any of the apps... Um, I I know there's um, I think the colour pin picker, uh, the colour picker app. Um, I think there's another one. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't use them because they they tend to focus on the pixel area rather than like the whole area. So this I'm kind of building up this these strands of fur as a whole area, whereas the colour pickers focus on those tiny pixels. So it doesn't always. And I've noticed. It's not always accurate. Like you, you look at a colour that the colour app will say it's black, but you can see there's some browns and grey tones in there. So try not if you use an app, try not to focus on using it and relying on using it. Um, really do experiment and um, use scrap pieces of paper to really help you build up and layer. Layering your colours, um, I find, is so so important. 
um, especially how I work anyway. Um, but yeah, that I don't use apps. Um, I just this is all just come over three years of experimenting and layering the colours because the good thing with this paper is you can see how many layers I'm able to build on the page. So if I feel I I'm going wrong at any time. I can just keep layering and layering um, and then I kind of come in with my darks and really start to build it up so it's the colour that I'm after. So yeah, try not to rush into just using the apps and relying on them. Um, try and experiment. Okay. Uh, so my the next question is, uh, what art supplies do I use? So I use uh, paper, the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolour Paper. I use the heaviest weight, so 640 GSM, um, because it, I like the amount of layers I can get on the page. Um, I also just like that it's essentially like card. It's so, so thick, and I just absolutely love working on it. I've also, uh, in terms of paper, I've also used um, drafting film, uh, graphics drafting film. I I tend to use the 0 .004. You can use the 005, the 003. Um, the, the zeros just mean how thick the paper is, but I honestly haven't found much difference working on the 04 to the 05. Um, the 05 goes out of stock a lot quicker, so I tend to stick with the 04. Um, again, that's just personal preference. Uh, in terms of pencils, I use the Faber-Castell Polychromos the Caran d'Ache Luminance and the Caran d'Ache Pablos. Now I'm going to be doing a different video on pencils, um, how I blend them, why I use the different pencils, um, but also in terms of materials, um, I'll link it in the description below, but I have a free materials list which is uh, free to download from my website um, and it basically lists all my pencils, uh, the pencils I recommend with each brand, the papers I recommend, why, etc. Um, so I will link that below and then if you're interested in seeing a full detailed list, um, you'll be able to uh, grab that from my website. As I say, it's free to download. Um, so yeah, that's the art supplies. Um, do I use a fixative with my work? I do not. Um, I have never seen why I needed to, uh, because this isn't going to shift from the paper. Um, I send my work double mounted um, and with uh, clear instructions not to touch the actual artwork itself. As you can see, I'm resting on uh, uh, clear paper, acid-free paper. Um, I never touch the paper or the drawing itself. Um, and I have heard, and whilst I was researching, um, too many horror stories of fixatives Chain, oops, changing the colour of the the pencils. You know, we've I've I don't know how long I've been on about forty five minutes now. Um, I mean, I've not done much, but I've you know done a lot to build up these layers and to create the colour and the tones that I'm after. And I have heard how it can change that, it can alter that. Um, I've also heard how sometimes the sprays uh, splutter and you're left with like little blocks like blobs of the fixative, little splodges. Um, so I don't ever want to risk that. Um, I also find that, you know, all the products I'm using are archival, so they're going to last a lifetime. They're not going to fade as long as everything is looked after properly. Now, when people are buying artwork, you know, it's bespoke, it's a luxury product. Um, They, they tend to take it to a frame as it gets properly framed and then uh, I have care instructions, you know, hang it, hang it out of direct, sorry, excuse me, <coughs> hang it out of direct sunlight, um, out of humidity, all of that. Um, and I've never ever had an issue, um, yeah, with needing to use a fixative. Um, even pieces that I sold years and years before um, in just graphite, they were never sprayed with a fixative and um, they're, they're still hanging pride of place in my clients' homes. Um, so yeah, it's nothing, not something that I personally do. Um, I know others do. Um, 
but yeah i i won't spray my work um i just don't think it's it's needed okay and then another question is how do i do my draft sketch preparation work so this really depends on the piece a piece like this um i've traced the outline uh other pieces um so something like a Siberian Husky, I really like to freehand um, Huskies. So I do a mixture of tracing the outline and freehanding the outlines. Now, if I'm tracing an outline, what I will do is I will take the image into uh, Procreate and I will trace an outline. Now, tracing an outline, you really have to focus on how much detail you want. Some people want a lot of detail, others want... Uh, less detail so this is quite detailed for me um, a little too detailed it can get confusing but I like to just kind of know where I'm going with things now you'll see as I've gone along I'm erasing I'm also not using the traced outline as my only outline I am constantly looking back at my reference photo so it's literally there as a guide is this tracing um, Yeah, just as I say, just to map out where it is. Now, if I'm freehanding, um, I will do it on a scrap piece of paper, um, like printer sheets that are type uh, that are the size of the drawing, so that I don't ruin this paper. This is expensive paper. I never do the initial drawing straight onto this paper. It's always transferred over, whether it's because I've freehanded and transferred the outline, or because I've traced and just freehanded it. Uh, traced it onto this paper but I always always transfer onto the drawing paper rather than doing the outline here um, when it comes to tracing it um, I flip the image so the traced outline was actually facing the opposite way to what she actually needed to be so that I can then once I transfer it onto here I can flip the image so it's facing the right way and just draw around the guideline so that I get this um, outline I use a very soft pencil, so usually like a B, a HB, um, something that I'm able to lift very easily off the uh, portrait because obviously we don't want the graphite shining through, or I, I personally don't want the graphite shining through, so I do lift it as I go. Um, but yeah, that's essentially how I create the outlines. It really depends. I, I trace for time. Um, it's you know quick quicker to get a traced outline down than it is to freehand. Freehanding can take all day sometimes if I can't get the proportions correct. If I'm not happy with something, it really cuts down on timing. Um, and I know there's so many people that just don't enjoy the drawing aspect. Um, I mean, I much prefer coming, you know, getting to this point where I'm literally sat down and I'm rendering the whole piece and I'm really building up my layers to create. Um, this final drawing so if you want to trace an outline please please don't be worried about tracing it um, all my tutorials I give you the outlines for that I use um, and you'll notice the people that have done my tutorials we all have the same outline but we all produce different you know different results the outline doesn't create the finished piece it's just a tool um, that helps along the way um, so yeah, I hope that helped. Um, another question I got asked, which I found was interesting, was do I ever get bored? And the answer is no. I absolutely love what I do. I am so grateful that I can be at home uh, with my dog. Um, I can sit in my studio and just lose the day you know to draw in um i as i said i absolutely love what i do i love creating portraits for my clients um i am i'm loving teaching people now on, over on patreon i love you know creating that community and helping people with their colored pencil journey um so i really don't get bored i work on so much so many different projects yes i do a lot of dogs <coughs> Um, I absolutely adore dogs. I specialise in dog portraits. And dogs is obviously what I want to be known for. But I love doing the Patreon tutorials where we do um, 
we do wildlife we do horses cats you know that i get so much variety within my job and no day is ever the same you know every piece is has its difficulties every piece has its bits that are easy there's so much variety um, i get to talk to some amazing clients i've met some amazing friends whether they they were clients that have become friends or they're other artists that i've met you know i yeah i really don't get bored i also as i mentioned previously with my chronic ill health i love the freedom that i've got within having my own business because if i need to be in bed all day i'm not worried that i have to go into an office um, and work under harsh lights that will make my migraine even worse um, i love that if i need to disappear into the woods for an hour with my dog i'm able to do so it's it's so liberating um, and having that peace of mind is yeah i think really does help stop me being bored but when you have a passion i think it's really hard to be bored. Um, I've mentioned this before on uh, to younger uh, clients, uh, not younger clients, sorry, uh, younger viewers of mine who who are always like, I'd get bored. And when I say to them, you know, do, do you enjoy playing football? And they'll be like, yeah. And I'd say, you know, could you, could you play football all day? Yeah, well, that's like me with drawing. I can sit here and just draw and lose track of time because I absolutely absolutely love what i'm doing so i think when you find you know the, your, your passion it's really hard to get bored is there days where i'm like i don't want to do the admin yet but i always always want to draw um and i i'm always ready you know to get up and just start drawing i as i say i absolutely love it so i don't i don't get bored um, and then another question that I was asked, which I'll probably leave this as my, the last question, is uh, when did I start drawing? So, like every artist, um, I guess as soon as I could draw, I was drawing. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I started off with graphite, so that one HB pencil that we all get. Um, and the more I was drawing, the more I kind of learned, you know, I could add different pencils. So I'd start with a one HB and then I added a 2B, I added a H pencil, I added, you know, all the different grades of the graphite. Um, and then, yeah, three years ago, I started with uh, coloured pencils because of lockdown. Um, and I don't use anything else now, actually. I don't use graphite. Um, I just use uh, coloured pencils, uh, which I, I absolutely love. I feel I still have so much to learn. Um, and there's so much more that I yeah, want to be able to create with my work and how I want my work to look. Um, but that's the, the great thing about artwork is we, we never really stop learning. We're, we're, always, we're always learning. So I am, I'm so excited for this journey that I'm still on and helping others with their journey as well, you know. It's it's all very exciting and something that I'm, yeah, so, so excited about and passionate about. I'm very, very fortunate and very lucky uh, to be able to do something that I absolutely love. Um, so this is the slice tool. Um, and I actually use this to, as you can see, create these flyaway hairs. And then if I needed any highlights i can also just come in and just create a few little highlights with the uh, slice tool and then i'm just going to come over and just soften that out with the luminance a little bit so it's a, a really fab tool and i can use that slice tool because i've built up so many layers here as i say it's all about your layers Okay, so I think I am going to stop rambling uh, and talking at you uh, or talking with you. Um, I mean, I've definitely been talking at you. <laughs> and I'm, I hope you've enjoyed this draw along with me. Uh, thank you for sticking it out if you watched to the end. It's uh, really appreciated. And I hope answering some of those questions helped as well. Um, if you have any other questions, do leave them down below. Um, and I am excited to be, uh, yeah, producing more videos for YouTube now. 
I'm hoping to do a few more of these sort of draw with me's where I just sit and work on whatever I'm working on at the time, whether it's a commission or an original, if I can't share the commission. Um, and obviously we have tutorials coming back. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, all my links will be down below in the description. Um, so if you fancy joining us over on Patreon, you can do. Um, I've created a, a gallery within my website so you can see all the different tutorials that are available as well um, if you want to join. Um, but yeah, please uh, like the video. It helps the channel out a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. Um, as I said, any questions, leave them down below. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And I will see you all soon. Bye for now.